After being put on ice by the talent agency, I purchased a male incubus from the black market. With white hair and golden eyes, a heart-shaped spike on the tail swinging slightly in mid-air, and a pink tattoo on his belly, he was quite a sight. I had him call me master, and took pleasure in bullying him ruthlessly. However, during an audition, he cornered me in the makeup room, revealing himself as a renowned Maverick director. His eyes were teasing yet full of an invasive sense of control. I'm sorry, it seems like now you have to call me master. Let's Eat Together is a live variety show. During the initial promotions, it claimed to be real and unedited. However, the general direction is still scripted, and for special guests like myself, there are even persona requirements. Along with the countless unexpected things that could happen during the live broadcast, it really tests our acting skills. The show consists of four regular guests. Each episode would invite a mystery guest, and our job is to prepare meals to welcome them. As per the director's request, I purposely arrived late for the filming of the first episode, and was dressed in fancy, exquisite clothes and exaggerated high heels. In contrast, Whitney who dressed simply garnered a lot of attention. Sure enough, the atmosphere in the live chat room was instantly fired up. Who is Willow trying to seduce dressed like that? If I didn't know better I'd think she's in some reality dating show, speechless. All of us are waiting for her, talk about self-importance. Poor Whitney's face has turned red from waiting. Seeing this comparison, I suddenly understand why all the resources have gone to Whitney, who'd be foolish enough to work with such a haughty person. She totally deserves the criticism. And many other similar comments. I walked up to the other three guests, took off my sunglasses deliberately, and in a high voice said, I'm sorry. My pet dog at home is very clingy. I was distracted and missed my flight, hence why I'm late. You all wouldn't mind, right? An apology without any hint of remorse and causing a delay in filming because of a dog. Frustrating indeed. Hugh, an emerging top-tier guest famous for being straightforward in his opinions, immediately looked unimpressed. He sarcastically said, so this is your attitude towards your work? No wonder, without a script, helping someone like you become famous is truly a misfortune of the entertainment industry. The barrage was full of praise for him as the voice of everyone. Whitney quickly changed the subject, pretended to be innocent and began to play peacemaker, oh, it's normal for a girl to be late for a while. Brother Hugh, you should speak more gently Hugh glanced at her, wanted to say something, then went off to eat some fruit in frustration. The bullet screen was full of laughter. Ha ha ha, did the number one truth teller in the entertainment industry just get shut down? This Whitney is kind of capable. Well, after all, Whitney is the girlfriend of the mysterious genius director Blake. Hugh is considered Blake's cousin, so he must be kinder to his own family. Can the production team invite Blake over as a mystery guest? I want to see the lovebirds show off their affection. Can't agree more. And many more comments like these. In the program, Whitney had already taken my hand with a bright smile, Willow, let me show you to the room. In the script provided by the production team, I was supposed to awkwardly smile and pull my hand out of her embrace at this point, and then deliberately provoke another guest, the aloof film Emperor Ethan. This film king had recently announced his mutual childhood crush, and their couple supers were super popular. Moreover, I was fortunate enough to have worked with Ethan on a TV drama that hadn't been aired yet, and I had seen his sweetheart on the set, a very cute girl. So I absolutely do not want to play the role of the other woman. Not even for the character setup. I silently turned towards Hugh, who seemed eager to smash the watermelon in his hand, and coquettishly asked, Hugh boy, can you help me with my luggage? He frowned tightly, retorting rudely, try making that annoying sound again? The comments section was filled with laughter. I pouted, pretending to be upset as I moved to lift my luggage. Whitney, trying to play her role, hypocritically tried to help me. Decisively, I picked up the smallest bag and left the overweight luggage to her. All right, it's just perfect since I don't know the way. Thanks a lot. Whitney looked startled, but due to the presence of cameras, she could only go to pick up the luggage. Before she had even touched the suitcase, Hugh stepped forward to help her out. Go have some food there, I'll help her. His differential treatment immediately made the live broadcast explode. Yes. I'm so thrilled to see Hugh's reaction. Willow really has no shame. Doesn't she know what courtesy is? After all, Whitney took her resources. She's probably seeking revenge. Such a petty person. The company, in an attempt to promote Whitney through this show, 
had enlisted the high traffic Ethan and Hugh. Adding my character as a contrast, they did put a lot of thought into this. After the show officially began recording, I started to talk nonsense to disgust everyone according to the script. Initially, I felt a little embarrassed, but later I discovered that this was absolutely thrilling. Ethan maintained an expressionless face towards everyone, so let's not discuss him. Hugh was obviously annoyed at me and kept snapping at me, but he had no excuse to take a whip and make me work. As for Whitney, she took on my tasks voluntarily just to display her kindness. She'd work the whole day till exhaustion but dared not utter a single word. What I had to do was to disgust everyone in front of the camera and chat with the charming male demon at home when the camera was not on. I would urge him to send a picture of his abs. Sometimes, Aiden would bashfully use bathing as an excuse. I would straight away call him on video. Are you there? Let me see the handsome guy taking a bath. His face would turn red and he'd answer in a shy and indulgent tone, Master, stop messing around. But the phone camera would faithfully show me his abs, and the slender tail that was nervously wrapped around his waist due to shyness. Hee <laughs> hee. It was so cute. Just as I was joyfully training the demon pup, a message from Whitney suddenly popped up. Willow. You're doing this on purpose to provoke me, right? Don't you think I can ruin your career in entertainment with only a sentence? I pretended to be innocent. I am just following the script. Since you have the guts to confront me, why not go to the director? She didn't respond. A minute later, the director stormed in aggressively. Willow, do you not want your salary anymore? Starting from tomorrow, follow the script in your dialogues, you're not allowed to make Whitney do your work anymore. She's the future Miss Vandermeer, who do you think you are to provoke her? Seeing the director's words, I pouted. Such an opportunist. Nevertheless, I obediently replied, All right then, director. The next day, while calling out Brother Hugh and personally feeding him to disgust everyone, I showed a cold face to Whitney. Whenever she wanted to help, I would grimace, not letting her interrupt my work. I made her teary-eyed. When I wasn't around, she deliberately said to others, Did I do something wrong that upset Willow? All the live chat comments were like, Baby, you did nothing wrong. Dear, don't be upset. Willow is the one with issues. Hugh kindly comforted her too, saying, don't concern yourself with her. I think she's not normal. It's no wonder her popularity won't rise. And thus, I was left to bear all the criticism. After the first episode, my Twitter blew up with slander from haters. The TV show with Ethan, which hadn't aired yet, was severely impacted too. A crowd of people were clamoring for the female lead to be replaced, claiming they felt disgusted looking at me. I leaned against Aiden's broad chest, ranting to him. I'm so irritated. Whitney keeps bullying me because she's that stupid Blake's girlfriend. I really want to kick her out. Completely out. Aiden froze for a moment, stupid Blake, his girlfriend? I stood hands on hips, explaining the whole situation to him. Upon hearing that the director stated Whitney would be the future Madame Vandermeer, he sneered with a cold look in his golden eyes, she wishes. And with that, he lowered his head to kiss my lips. Don't worry, she will definitely not get into the Vandermeer family. Before I could ask why, I was swept away by Aiden's kiss. After going crazy at home with Aiden for a week, I quickly set off to record the second episode. We were told in advance that the guest this week was going to be a well-known comedian in the industry. Who would have guessed that they would switch at the last minute to Howard the uncle who received Blake's award six years ago? He was actually a businessman, carrying a temperate yet dignified demeanor. Rumor has it that he would be the future authority figure of the Vandermeer family. His guest appearance on this show was definitely a leap for the director. Hugh was also visibly unaware of this. One second he was teasing me about my laziness, the next he was dutifully greeting the person at the front door with respect, hello, uncle. Even though he called him uncle, Howard only appeared to be in his early thirties. He curved his lips slightly, just be at ease during the show. Hugh hurriedly nodded, taking up the role of a mediator and introduced both parties. This is the well-known best actor, Senior Ethan. This is Willow. He reluctantly mentioned my name. Then visibly perked up when introducing Whitney, this is Whitney, cousin Blake's girlfriend. On hearing this, the live chat room nearly broke down. OMG. Whitney really is Blake's girlfriend. Whoa. Who gave Willow the audacity to offend the future Madame Vandermeer? Just waiting for Willow to be boycotted.
No wonder Willow's always insisting on calling Hugh brother. Turns out she's jealous of Whitney marrying into the Vandermeer family, and is trying to rope in Hugh to get some of that family glory. Willow's too idiotic. Does the Vandermeer family even care about her getting clout? She's too naive, thinking she can waltz into the aristocracy just like that. On hearing Hugh's words, Howard raised an eyebrow slightly, curling his lips into an inscrutable smile. I was momentarily stunned. Because his action reminded me of how Aiden had raised his brow before I taught him to smoke. It seems like. But Aiden had clearly said he was an orphan. I know. It must be a coincidence. How could a young master of the Vandermeer family end up in the black market as a beguiling demon, getting bullied by me, still be content about it? It's definitely a coincidence. I quickly calmed down and stood by the side with tranquility, watching nervously as Whitney greeted Howard. Hello, Mr. Howard. Howard smiled in a polite yet estranged manner. He did not deny the phrase Blake's girlfriend that Hugh had mentioned. Whitney once again topped the trending list. Blake's fans also started following her on Twitter, calling her sister-in-law. The live chat room temperature also soared. The director was so pleased that he couldn't contain his laughter. Throughout the day's recording, Hugh, who had exposed the truth, started openly calling Whitney sister-in-law. At first, Whitney did not dare to confirm it, often looking at Howard with a hint of fear in her eyes. But every time, it was as if Howard didn't notice her glance, taking the initiative to come over to see what I was doing, and even asked me to teach him to carve carrots. I was truly flattered. During that time, he suddenly asked me, what do you think Blake is like? I was startled, ah? Uh, I don't know him. Howard squinted, his gaze becoming obscure, well, I forgot, sorry. Whitney, who was on the other side, saw me being with Howard all the time, and her face grew sullen. Then, pretending to be kind, she came over to take over my work. I had an idea what she was up to and tactfully handed her the knife. Accepting the kitchen knife with a bright smile, she turned to Howard to say something. Who knew that Howard would turn his head and leave with me? Leaving her standing there in a daze. The live chat was filled with question marks. What does Howard mean? Could he be interested in Willow? No way. He's probably just avoiding favoritism. But if it's about favoritism, would it be not better to follow Hugh? Hugh is left by himself still cooking, why doesn't Howard go over? Whoa. What tricks does Willow use? How come she's so good at luring people? Hugh, with his face covered in smoke and exhausted, naturally took notice of what was going on. He blinked in confusion, and his gaze fell innocently on Howard. He straightforwardly asked, Uncle, why do you stick around Willow so much? She's not a good person. Oh? Is that so? Howard casually countered, and then moved to his side, stuffing the half-cucumber he was holding into his mouth. Talk less. Hugh, caught off guard, pulled out the cucumber in indignation, listing my transgressions. Uncle, let me tell you, she's lazy and a big faker. Don't let her face fool you. I thought to myself, what does that mean? Is he complimenting me, and couldn't help but laugh out? It attracted everyone's attention. I quickly waved my hand, sorry for laughing. I couldn't help it after being praised for being pretty. Go on, continue. Hugh, realizing he misspoke, looked aggrieved. Howard curled his lip, patted Hugh's head, and gravely insinuated, you know your cousin Blake holds a grudge, right? Hugh nodded, I know. When we were kids, I playfully pushed him into a field during a spring outing, he covertly tore up my homework for a year, but claimed that our family's dog did it. Howard had a gentle look in his eyes, yet his words were sharp, then you can continue to await your fate this time. He looked confused. His eyes spun, did I fail to take care of my sister-in-law? Howard thought for a moment, hmm, you could say that. Upon hearing this, Hugh immediately put down his work and rushed over to help Whitney. Howard watched the scene from the side with a smile. The audience, as outsiders, finally started to notice something wrong. Am I the only one who thinks Howard is hinting at something? I feel his smile is gloating, he appears somewhat sly. Ladies, I have a bold idea. Could it be possible that Willow is Blake's girlfriend? This could also explain why Howard is closer to Willow, and even says that Hugh failed to take care of his sister-in-law. Look at those Willow fans over there, not even checking the type of person your idol is. Blake's girlfriend, does she deserve him? Exactly. Our Whitney is the real sister-in-law. Hugh certified. 
But Howard doesn't seem to recognize it. Am I the only one who was charmed by Willow's laugh just now? It's so cute and fun, haha. <laughs> After lunch, it was my turn to wash the dishes, and the others were out in the sun chatting. I took the chance to crouch in the blind spot of the camera to ask my little dog what he was doing. Aiden replied quickly. He sent a selfie holding a broom. The kind that showed off his abs. Reply to the owner, cleaning. Looking at him, my heart bloomed. Good, good, very obedient. I'll reward you when I get back. What kind of reward? He also sent a pitiful face poking his finger. In fact, it made me want to go home and kiss him right away. I was about to reply to him when Whitney's voice suddenly sounded behind me. What is this? Waiting for your owner to reward you? Willow, what kind of disgusting stuff are you talking about? She covered her mouth in surprise, her expression shy, but her eyes sparkling with a hint of schadenfreude. Before I could respond, she ran outside shyly to proclaim what she had seen to everyone. I'm so embarrassed. I just saw Willow chatting with a boy and calling herself an owner. What strange hobby is that? Howard was particularly surprised when he heard this and gave me a surprised look. It made feel even more awkward. So I couldn't help but say to Whitney, really, sis? Why don't you register an overseas account and tell the whole world? I'm speechless. What do you mean by sneaking a peek at my chat and shouting it out? She hid behind Hugh and said, in a pitiful tone, I didn't know you are into such different things, this is considered different? I said, looking at the camera and declaring confidently, I don't think this is different. I proudly announce my endorsement for the BDSM community. The director was also stunned. Looking at me as if I were crazy. I ignored the astonishment of the people present and smiled at Whitney, innocently asking, however, when I was a child and my mother was still alive, she taught me not to pry into other people's privacy, and even if I saw it unintentionally, I shouldn't talk about it everywhere. You, did you just do that because you didn't have a mother who taught you? She was stunned for a moment before she realized I was scolding her, and her expression faltered. She glared at me fiercely, you. But soon she controlled herself and put on the appearance of a victim, I really didn't mean it, I'm sorry, Willow. Hugh instantly jumped out to play the sister-in-law protector, accusing me with full vigor, Willow, do you have to be so aggressive? My sister-in-law has already apologized, what else do you want? You're really pressing too hard, you petty person. I was speechless and couldn't help but look at Howard, is this the moral concept of your Vandermeer family? Howard politely bowed his head in apology to me, I'm sorry, Miss Willow, it's our fault that he hasn't been brought up well. When we get back, I'll tell my sister to educate him properly. This indirectly implied that he did not agree with Hugh's words. Uncle. Why are you favoring outsiders? What kind of bewitching drug did Willow give you? Hugh. Howard completely cooled his face, with just one floating glance, he made everyone present feel an irresistible pressure. The barrage in the live room also paused for a moment. Wow, I got scared. I feel like an elder at home is about to drag me to the ancestral hall and beat me up. But speaking of which, why is Howard sided with outsiders? Exactly. Willow is obviously being aggressive, bullying our Whitney. You fans of Whitney, don't go too far, okay? Speaking someone else's chat records loudly, why don't you say it's Whitney who's bullying Willow? Or are you all like this? Passerby's comment, I think Willow is fine here, but Whitney is a bit green tea. Members of the BDSM community are here to support Willow. I've never scolded her, so please God bless me with a puppy soon.